Most of you know that my primary archery discipline is Olympic archery, and you probably know that I've dabbled in Asiatic archery. Traditional archery was always the kind of archery that I thought I'd be doing before my pathway opened up, and I felt some regret in not having a place in Melbourne where it could be taught. The only place I knew of was Maidan Archery Club in Sydney, which is a little out of reach for regular practice. Fate finds a way, however. Not only did I discover a new archery club in Melbourne dedicated to traditional Ottoman archery, they had invited Ahmed Karat, a teacher at Maidan, to come to Melbourne to train their new instructors. I made the drive to Archery Ascension, located in Narrawarra North in Melbourne's far eastern suburbs. It was quite a change from my normal environment. The club was only just starting up and wasn't yet open to the public, and most of it was undeveloped fields. The club had ambitious plans however. Not only were they training up their future instructors in Turkish archery, they were also training horses and planning out a horse archery circuit, certainly the first of its kind in Melbourne. There I met Omar, president of Archery Ascension, and Ahmed from Maidan, who were as honoured to meet me as I was to meet them. Immediately, we all felt a close bond as we recognised each other as brothers of the bow. For the whole day, I felt immersed in an incredible environment with people of like mind, passionate students of archery and practitioners of a martial form separated by generations from the modern sport we practice today. And yet, there was ample opportunity to learn from each other, and through our conversations, we learned of many similarities between traditional and modern training techniques. That was the other arrow that flew straight, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, uh, it yes, yes, that's right, yeah, that's right. Arrow is never lying. Of course, of course. It's never lying, it's funny. Of course. <laughs> of course. And we shoot at Torwa, no flashy. That's right. Same with um, is it? archery, yeah. We, 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 use, we use it just to, to so tell us it's a bear shot. Like uh, we shoot flesh, but to diagnose this in our archery, we have to tune the bow to tune it. Yeah, tune it. Yeah. My session began with an impromptu talk from Ahmed on the history and philosophy of Ottoman archery. He shared many pearls of wisdom, which you'll find in its entirety in a separate video. In archery, archer has to have two principal good, traits. Patience is number one. Two is the Turks call it taqwa. Taqwa means, if I was to translate it, dedication. They explain it as so that your hand, eye, and heart doesn't waver from the target. So your soul is focused solely on one thing. That's why the person said, teach your children three things before the age of seven: how to wrestle, how to cast an arrow, and how to tell the truth. And if they had these three principles at seven years old, they were well on the way of becoming men. But that's here philosophy. Even though you are practicing to perfection, sometimes you will miss. Yes. That's why we say talent pulls the bow, destiny releases the arrow. After listening to Ahmed's teachings and watching the others practice, it was my turn to get a practical lesson. This was the most interesting part for me. As a Western archer, I came in with a large amount of prior knowledge and experience. But where most might struggle to adapt to Eastern archery, I was already familiar with the basics. I was able to learn about some of the crucial mechanical elements of traditional technique that I needed someone to show me. So in all archery forms, you mm -hmm. see the thumb is never up. Yes. Um, they say, I met a Polish fencing master. He yes. said, I learned how to grab my saber from Taibura, from um, archery. Yes. Because in, in the manual it says, Grip the bow as you would do a sabre. Oh, okay. Remember? Okay. Bow is the uh, strongest of the pinky, followed by the ring, followed by the... Yes, yes. Okay, and the thumb, when you talk about it, it's the dead finger. Ah. If you play with it, you play with the arrow, right? Yes, yes, yes. So you place the arrow on the thumb, and the thumb is always completely still and relaxed. Yes. In any archery, like this, across the board. Yes, that's true, You won't true, see just Jamal with the thumb up. That's right. Ever. Yes. Always done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, that I was see. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's up here. Yep. That's why the forward anchor is when the touch. with the metal touches yes. the nail. You are open. See how you are. Your hand is like this. If yes. you were to punch someone like that, what would happen to your wrist? It will. It would. Yeah. Yep. So, torque. Ah, uh, yes. Torque, 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 yes. Torque, torque, torque. Torque. Uh, yes. As if you're trying now, to punch the target. Really it really yes. helps when you're imagining the punching okay, the target. Good. Now it's right. That's right. Try that. Okay. Let me small Bang. Like this. 
That's that uh Yes. And look at this is Hatra in in your front yes. of your eyes. You yes. can't lie about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. There's no lying. That's because I don't it, ever, it, it, it allows you to clean. You had a proper hatra. Yes. Because your wrist was in a proper yes. direction. Yes. It's very important. Yes. And when we say hatra, Mihail, mm -hmm. he says put it down until you feel a stretch here. You understand? Yes. Yeah, yes. Same thing. Yes. But so when you shoot, you are pre-torquing the bow. Yes. Let yep. go. Let, eh, oh, yeah, yeah, squeeze. Yep. Squeeze. Eh, bring it here. Yep. Now torque. Okay. Squeeze. Mm -hmm. Torque. Ah, oh, I see. I see. So yep. I squeeze. I put so that's the, the position and middle of you... my bow in yep. the middle of my hand. Yep. And then I torque. Yep. It's kind of a torque. Yep. You, it's pre-torque. Pre Hatra is n is not something you, you emphasize. It's, it's, a, it's yes. a result, it's a result. of a pre-torque of your technique. Yes. That's all. Yes. A tight grip. Tight grip. Like a punch. Mm -hmm. Forward. Punch forward. That's it. And this finger out yep. of the way. Okay. Perfect. You, you got it. Uh -huh. Like that. Eagle claw. It, yes. Yes. Eagle okay. claw. Forward. Okay. Punch forward. Go. That feels natural, no? Natural, yes. Thanks. Okay. I'm not doing this a lot. Yeah. This Thanks. is okay. Yep. Then. And yeah. It's like pouring, you have a bottle of water and you're pouring it out like that. Sure, are you yours? I'm sad. Um, I don't know anymore. I'm okay with them being on the way to work. Oh, yeah. Now it's actually three to use the power anymore. Oh, okay. That was that. Yeah. I came with six yeah. though. I came with six. I stepped okay. one. <laughs> I, one of my, I lost my <laughs> After learning the basics of Ottoman archery, including the bow grip and katra, I spent a bit more time practicing. As all archers know, perfect practice makes perfect. I was a long way from that, but I felt enlightened after the guidance from Ahmed and the others. If you can, like, with your katra, think about going your way with the even with the sideways katra. Yep. So with forward katra, yep. think about pushing these two knuckles into the target. Yes. With the sideways katra, think about pushing. Okay, imagine you've got a knuckle yes. in, right? Yes. So instead of uh, like flaring, yeah. Push, push it, push it in. 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 So in. it's like you pick the spot and you drive it in. Drive it in. Yeah. Okay. Or if it was like a kind of, so like this cut is like that kind of mm -hmm. punch. Yep. And this one's like that kind of punch. Like that. You know what I mean? This last thing. Because as, as in the bow hand? Bow hand. Yeah, yeah, so your right hand, because it's not trained to hold that bow in that way that. Ah. Oh. Was it aha moments? Hmm? Just oh, yeah. learning about the um, the katra, so kind of keeping it in. So I've got the arrows. And the first one's going that way. The last one's a bit straighter. Yeah, it'll turn towards you. That's right. When you can see just a dot and fletches, yeah, you hit the perfect shot. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, exactly. that's what it should look like. As in, so you know how lots of the time they they off to the side. Yep. But when see if you stand right there and you see this bottom left one there, that blue one. Yeah. It's literally all you're looking at is a dot and three lines. That's yeah. like the perfect yeah. shot because it's literally just it's straight. Just straight. For the, for the, for the bullet and and yeah. your and the bow has moved out of the way Are so you? that it's not. So because what's happening with the arrow, it's going like this, yeah. Mm. So if it goes like. It's on this angle, yeah. and it hits it, then it'll be sticking out that way. Yeah. So this, all of them sticking out this way, means that that's, that's the position that they're in whilst they're swimming. Yeah. So if you move this angle, this maybe five meters back, then they'll all be in that process. Yeah. Yes. So, so when you yeah. get the khatra, and you, when, you, when you get it right, it doesn't matter what distance, they'll all be straight. Hey, 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 what you did there, was that a forward or was that a... It's, it's forward. What else do you mean forward? I flared too much to the side. It's more of a... That kind of move. And I obviously yeah. didn't steer properly, so it's got that deviation. But that last shot, I went much I, I, much straighter. It's also a timing thing. A timing if you do it too well. early, you're going to throw your Absolutely. shot. If you do it too late, there's no khatra. Yeah, exactly. Our session was broken up with an intimate lunch, where we sat and ate together and shared our experiences as archers. It was a valuable exchange as we talked about archery history and archery philosophy, and I was also asked to share my own experience and wisdom in running a club and being a teacher. Nice. I was just uh, commenting to them how you are just keep your edit. They have a lot to learn from you as well, but not like also from archery perspective. Mm. I'm if you have some is. time, please help them establish. Of course, that's yeah, why I come here. It's my first touch. This yeah. won't be the last time I'm here. Because I'm in Sydney, and you would you would do wonders for them. You really would. Yeah. Um, I've learned a lot as it is at the moment. You're so, very welcome. Um, they've been very good teachers, and uh, you know, I. We are very very happy. I'm so happy I met you because. You know, so, yeah. 
And the one thing I enjoy more than teaching archery is learning archery. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sometimes when you teach all the time, you don't get a chance to learn. Yes, yes. So nothing come nice. out come out of that and you know learn something something to new. I ended the session by joining the group at shooting at a 50 meter target, not having the confidence to lob arrows that far and learning the lessons of patience and pride, I instead decided to bring out the Olympic recurve and fling arrows downrange in a more familiar manner, highlighting the extreme differences in mentality in Western and Eastern archery, in which Western archery adapts to tool or Eastern Beautiful. archery adapts to user. <laughs> At the end of the day, it was an amazing experience with amazing people. I felt welcomed as part of the family and being able to meet everyone here was a lifetime experience. This certainly won't be the last time I hang out with Archery Ascension and Maidan Archery Club. If you want to find out more about these traditional clubs, follow the links in the video description. I hope you enjoyed my experience. As usual, shoot straight and aim for your best.